You are on to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. The Bible says he has given you all things to enjoy. Not all things to endure. All things to enjoy. There's a way it is that you want to bob your head, you don't have money. Is that life? Hello? I'm talking to some people tonight. There's a way it is you want to take little, oh, you, you want to move from here to there, and the keke money is just 100 now. But you cannot move. No, something is wrong. And if you are full of passion, you want to change this thing, you cannot be comfortable with that stuff. If you have a destiny, you know there's somewhere you are going to. You can't be comfortable in that stuff, that kind of life. Listen, things don't change on their own accord. Things change when people start changing. Things don't improve on their own accord. Things will only improve when you start improving. It's going to get better with time. Now lie, it will get worse with time. As long as you're getting worse. Number one, put that scripture up. Seven killers of destiny. I'll show you that quickly. Number one, wrong or negative thoughts pattern. See what the Bible says here in the book of First Peter. Okay, but let me read this quickly. Now the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus will personally restore, establish, strengthen and support you after you have suffered a little. Hello? I was trying to show you that to let you know that God is interested in your restoration, your establishment. He's interested in strengthening you and in supporting you. He didn't say you are going to suffer forever. He said, after you have suffered a little, somebody says suffering a little, you are not meant to travel the wilderness for 40 years. It's a journey of 40 days. But you see, because of ignorance, and some of the things I'm going to show you, a lot of people have lasted their wilderness experience beyond. It's just like graduating from a department in the university, and you're still writing carryovers. You're still writing carryovers. You're done with school, but you're not done with school. Listen, one of the greatest things that can happen to you is to know when your season of toiling is over. And let me tell you, your season of toiling ends when you improve the condition of your internal world. Because your external world is controlled by your internal world. Nothing changes without, only it changes inside. So people are busy praying. God, do something new in my life. Something new. He, he didn't run a lot of skills. Something tangible in my life. Oh Lord. Do something new in my life. And then the, the spiritual is it. Something tangible in my life. You did that my eh? Why ain't your heaven like, oh, that's good. I like the sound. <laughs> It won't do anything. Something special in my life. I like that, Max. Oh, Lord. And you really singing it. The landlord is waiting on. The last time I entered boss, let me tell you what happened. You know, this season, eh, get ready. A lot of people in town, they won't pity you again, they will envy you. It's better to be envied than pitied. 
we are going to talk success in this church, eh? We're going to talk for prosperity in this church to a point people will be gossiping. They will be cre- like that church now, prosperity only, now success only. Listen, we will make heaven on earth and make heaven in heaven. Of what use is this if you can't put the gospel on TV? The Bible says in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be lifted far above other mountains and the nations will flow into it. Christianity without prosperity is timidity. It's not in Christianity about it. It is not friend. It's equals timidity. You don't know what Jesus did for you. You don't know what Jesus has kept in store for you. If you get the principles, I'll show you now. You will unlock this chapter. Romans chapter 12. Be ye renewed. Be you by the renewing of your mind. Let me show you that scripture. Oh, thank you. Do not be conformed. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. To, but be transformed. See transformation. What is transformation? Transformation is metamorphosis. What is metamorphosis? Changing form to another. For instance, butterfly. If you did biology in school, they taught you about metamorphosis, right? Metamorphosis. If you don't experience metamorphosis, forces of life, forces of poverty, forces of forces, metamorphosis, moving from one form of existence to another form. Look at all the things you see around you, for instance. Take a look at your cars. There was a time, I'm going to tell you that bus story, don't worry. There was a time your car, the cars you used to drive, I was seeing on the internet one day on uh, Facebook, somebody posted something on my Facebook wall and I was seeing the old Pijo car 404 and they showed the latest one the pair of the pictures then they showed the old pickup pick up. then they showed the latest kind of they showed the old days boss they showed the new age to the highest and the rest of them and I could only say how times have changed things. How things have changed over time. But a lot of people have refused to change with the unfolding realities of life. Nothing should experience metamorphosis like you. You know why? Because you are more living than any other thing. If butterfly can experience metamorphosis, why are you not experiencing it? The only place some people experience metamorphosis is during birthdays. Birthday, what they celebrate, age, ah, and plus one today. That's the only place. They don't experience it in their finance. They don't experience it in their relationships. They don't experience it in their marriages. They don't experience it in their businesses. Changing from one form to the other. That's transformation. Trans. Now, let's take the word and break it down. You know, I like to break words. Transformed. Two words there. Transformed. The first one is called trans. As in, when you say something is in trans, it means something is in motion. Transit. Transport. Trans, whatever. It means that thing is in what? Motion. Trans. Now look at the second word. Formed. 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 So what is transformation? Moving from one form to the other. Hello? Transformation. Moving from one form to the other. Now look at the word. Conformed. Conformed. When you say something is conformed, what does it mean? It means this thing has taken shape. This thing has, it's like a rod cast in the concrete. It has taken shape. You try to pull it. The best you can do is bend it. 
just like trying to convince somebody, convince, convince. The person refused. The only thing I tell you, you spoke nicely, but I don't accept what you said. You just bent it. That's confirmed. Something has been cursed. So you see what is keeping a lot of people down in life is that they are conformed to a particular way of life. They are being cast. They are like rods cast in the concrete. In their minds, because that's where the issue is. Change does not begin from without, it begins from inside. And where is the inside? Know your stomach. We're not telling you go and eat more food. That's not where the change begins. As long as you're eating more food, change is happening. That's not it. Change will only happen in your body when you eat more food. But what about change happening in your finances? Not food now, it's the mind. Not the stomach, the mind. What about change happening in your health, in your relationships, in your career? It's the mind. That's the stomach of success. You want to see change in your body, eat good food, the stomach. See change in success, feed your mind. See it now. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing. That means to move from conformity. You need cleansing of the mind. Renewing of your mind. Renewing is a continuous tense, right? Is that a continuous tense? Renewing of your mind. So that you may discern what is good. Hello? Let me tell you how I'm discerning things now. I'm discerning that private jets are good. You don't like it? Leave it. How can you discern what is good when your mind is full of darkness? When God made light, He said, Oh, this is good. I'll tell you the story of how I exited the bus life. And that bus one day, and the baby was sitting with the mother very close to me. The first thing was that the bus didn't move in time. I know if you're in public transport, you don't have control over that vehicle. You don't. So noise, noise, before you notice it, one guy just came. I said, Brad Train, it is time for the word of God. And he poured things. Phew, guy. And I was sitting by the window. The guy was standing close to me. I didn't want to embarrass him, brother Shift. Because I'm a pastor and he's a fellow. Not, sorry, not a fellow. He is also, you know, a man. <laughs> he opened his mouth, was speaking. Mm. I could do the breath was bad. The bus got filled and stopped. I don't say, please, can you tell the driver to put the car on standby on the car and put the AC? I looked at the condition of the car. I knew this car wouldn't have AC. Hey, we entered the bus. The driver entered the bus. Bam, close the door. Oh, car started. Hey, the guy zoomed off. Enter the road. Vroom, 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 vroom. He said, Chai. He was doing all of that. Before he noticed it, the woman sitting close to me with her baby. Baby was crying, shouting. And where were we going to? Worry. And you know when a worry woman is with a worry baby in the car. Don't pray to me that situation. The baby was shouting. The woman was like, you don't do now. I didn't want chalk pop off. I take pop off. Take, 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 take. You don't do. I said, God, this is not fair. I said, change this situation, else I change you. I said, this is not good. They give the baby pop off. They carry the pop off. I told me. I don't want chalk pop off. What you want that in the meat? Don't you say that for two Why are we take cooking in the meat now? You go wait, the whole rich or real cooking in the meat. Hey, no AC. That day I came down from the car. I said, Father, it's over. I won't try this again. You know why I felt restless? Because I could discern what is good. You know why people are in a particular very, very foolish, stupid life. And they are not making efforts to move from that life. 
they have not renewed their mind first what a renewed mind will do is that it starts creating a different spectacle it starts creating a different way of thinking it starts creating a different kind of expectation you don't expect inferior things again you start expecting things that are noble and listen you can attract what you don't expect you will not be able to attract what you don't expect so something in me started wanting cars and not just cars good cars why because i started thinking like that i'm talking to you about the first thing the first killer of destiny wrong and negative thought i'm good and you can drive a car even i i didn't have the money at the time but see what i was doing go to a car shop how much is this car it's two million okay what about this one? It's 4.5. Okay. It's good. Can I test it? I'll enter the car, drive. We will drive around town, smile like this car is good. I like it. She will go and pack it back. At least they don't charge you for that one. Some of you have never done it in your life. Even when you go to do it, they will catch you. They will know you don't have the money. Me, I will dress in my stand tie. Carry empty polio. At least. So I'll drive it. When I drive the car, I come down. I'm like, okay, what's the payment plan? I'll just speak one small English. Like, sorry, what do you mean, sir? You want to pay us by check? I said, no, that's what I mean. Do you guys accept instrumental payments? I'm like, eh, well, sir, we don't actually, but it depends. If you're a civil servant or you work with, we can take, yes, we can do things like, we can get posited check or we can, um, you know, on your salary, we can be having deductions and, it's okay, I'm not a civil servant, I don't work at the bank I am a, I'm a pastor But can you give me three weeks I'll come back for this car He's like, Okay, so no problem, we'll keep it for you I'll go and pray, Father I need this car, send me the money Wherever it is, whoever has this money I need it, I was free My mind was tailored to work. So if I see Keke, I'm angry some of you have become comfort to Keke, so you don't think you know nothing apart from you. Wake up in the morning, it's Keke you're expecting. Ah, why do you know Keke today? Keke is wasting time. For what? How did all the Keke guys go on strike? Ah! Oh, kill your destiny. So I see Keke man, I vex. I see Okada, they still pains me. I see a range of a pass. I said, child. See what I even said to at the time. I was even taking seats to some fight. I would sometimes I'm somewhere. A fine cute car just come and park. I'll just collect the last 500 in my pocket. I'll go and meet it. I said, man, your car is my shit. I'm expecting something like this soon. Fuel this car back. I've done it for un- uncountable times. I have lost count. Fuel your car back. You know what I was doing? I was calling for this thing. I was creating it in my mind. Sometimes I sleep, and the last thing on my mind is I'm driving a good car, a Jeep, a Range, a Mercedes Jaguar, a Mercedes G Wagon, a Jaguar. I'm just creating it in my mind. And sometimes I sleep and I'm driving it in a dream. And sometimes it's so real that when I get up, I get angry for getting up. It was like that. Before long. Those things I was dreaming instead of becoming my reality. Now I've moved from the realm of thinking car. What I'm thinking now is private jet. Okay, how did I live the bus life? Traveling by the Bayonga. I saw myself flying. Flying. I, the last time I traveled to Lagos by road with my car, I fell sick. I bowed. It. Not just international now. Both local travel. I will never go a long distance by road in Nigeria. And because I programmed it in my mind, that has become my reality. Consciously or consciously, I want to go to Lagos now. Even if the cash is not in my pocket. Before I go, the money arrives. To and fro, I book my ticket. To and fro. I can't do that in God Road. Nigeria Road. No, I can't do it. I created it in my mind. Why? Because this mind has been renewed. So now it can be and what is good, pleasing, and the perfect will of God. Can you see that good things are God's will for your life? How many of you are with me tonight? Good things are God's will for your life. 
So why not start changing the way you think? It's one of the things that cripples destinies. Number two, because of time. Laziness. Laziness. I usually say it this way. Laziness is the safest vehicle to a land of dryness. Laziness is refusing to do something about the pictures you have seen. Success starts with recreating your mind. But when your mind has been recreated, the next thing you need to start doing is taking steps consciously. Whether it is sweet or not sweet in the direction of what you have seen. But what stops people from making motion, even when they have seen the goods of their life, is laziness. Laziness is a crippler of destiny. Laziness is deliberate refusal to do what is needful rather than doing what is convenient. A man who has a destiny will not do what is convenient. He does what is necessary. He does what is necessary. He wants to build a company. He wants to build a business. He sits down building it. Do you know how I've been able to guess what it means I get? Let me shock you with this. Anytime I want to do something, I don't look at the capital required to do it. I look at my will, the will power, the tenacity. That's what is required. I look at the drive. For instance, I want to publish a book and I don't have the money. I don't need money to write the book. All I need is to write a book. I don't need money to design the book. All I need to do is design the book. I just give a time frame. Do sometimes you see me? I'm working on those books. I'm working on my books. You think Pastor already has the millions to buy, publish the books? Hey. But I'm busy working on the books because I know it does not take money to write it. What it takes is just this brain. I have something I want to put down on paper, right? Start putting it down. Start writing it. I prepare, do the design, package it. Is the book ready for publishing? Yes, it is ready. The money will come. Because if I keep waiting for the money to come before I publish the book, I will not even write the book. So you see, there are little steps you need to take to advance towards your destiny. The question is, are you taking those steps? They are deliberate steps. Deliberately calculated steps. But what will stop you from taking those steps? Laziness. Laziness is not the thing of the body, it's a thing of your soul. It's a thing of the soul. It's a thing of the soul. If your soul is sick, if your soul is redundant, if your soul is epileptic, let me use that word. Today you are up, tomorrow you are down. If you have that kind of soul syndrome, that kind of soul syndrome, you would hardly advance quickly into your destiny. Every man with a destiny has one currency he does not play with. It's called drive. 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 You wake up in the bed every morning with something to do. No matter how little. No matter how small. Something to accomplish. When you wake up in the morning, what do you set to accomplish for that day? Laziness. I see how people manifest laziness. You can either manifest ma- manifest laziness mentally, manifest laziness psychologically, you can manifest laziness physiologically, you can even manifest laziness in the body. When every time what you feel like doing is sleeping, you are slowly headed towards failure. A late man will sleep 6 p.m. in the night or 8 p.m. in the night and wake up 10 a.m. in the morning. That's a man who is slowly headed in the direction of failure. That lazy man. A man who sees his destiny and is curious about doing something in spite of how his body feels. He's up in the night. He's chatting the course. He's reading the book. He's solving an equation of life. Why? He has seen a glorious future that he cannot jeopardize. That's a problem of Africa. Laziness. Both laziness of the soul, laziness of the body, laziness of everything. Even laziness of the spirits. 
you will not be able to go anywhere far if you don't cure that problem. It's a killer of destiny. Number three, procrastination. What does it mean? Putting off what you can do today for tomorrow. Ah, don't worry tomorrow, don't worry tomorrow. There's still time. There is no time. Listen, do you know you don't have tomorrow? The only day you have is today. You see what Jesus meant by when, when he said, do not take any thought for tomorrow. You know what he was saying? He wasn't saying don't think about the future. No, that's what he meant. He was telling you, stop putting off things to tomorrow. Today is the best that you've got. Make the most out of it. Today may be all that you have. Make the most out of it. Today may be the last day in human dispensation. Make the best out of it. Procrastination is said to be the graveyard where opportunities are buried. That dream you want to accomplish, accomplish it now. That money you want to make, make it now. That investment you want to make now. There is no other best time than now. Why should you be so certain for a tomorrow you've not seen more than a day you already seen? That's the problem. Why should you be more certain about tomorrow that you have not yet seen? More than today that is in your hands. Oh, I'm going to read that book tomorrow. Don't worry. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to make that friend tomorrow. Don't worry. Oh, I'm going to start that church tomorrow. But tomorrow is just a grave where opportunities are buried. Oh, I'm going to take that course tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to do that tomorrow. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to improve myself tomorrow. I'm going to get a new... I'm going to do that tomorrow. It's only a grave where opportunities are buried. Do something about today. Tomorrow has got its own troubles to take care of. There is enough already in your tomorrow. So why moving things to tomorrow and compiling? It's just like dirty clothes. When you wear a cloth today and it's dirty, it's not washing, you say, don't worry, I'll wash it tomorrow. So you move it to tomorrow, you wear another clean clothes tomorrow. It compiles. Now there are two. Oh, don't worry, next tomorrow. You move it to tomorrow, you wear another cloth now. There are now three. <laughs> and there are people who change clothes up to three times a day. So it keeps compiling. The day you would have to wash that cloth, you will spend hours washing it. Then you have other things you need to do that same day that could be compiling again and you may not achieve all. So why not deal with procrastination? It's a destiny killer. Number four, fear. Fear, 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 fear of anything. Fear of fear, fear of starting small, fear of anything, fear of anything. Criticism, fear of not making it fear of being laughed at ah, if I start this thing now she will laugh at me, it's too small there's a guy in this state, in this town of Akiliki a few days ago um, I was with some people and they were talking about him and they were analyzing how he started his business he sells clothes clothes, clothes just clothes but he started those days far back in cars the cars campus there how did it start? Okay, so you know what okay's are? All cricker. Okay. Okay shoes. Okay clothes. Okay boxes. Okay singlets. He would just open the bell, you know, and uh, he has it just around one, just by the roadside. So students will be passing by. Anyone who pities him will just pick one, give him 500 and walk away. did it for a little while bang, 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 bang. before we noticed it the guy has moved from that place he has a new location now before you notice it ah, he has moved he now has a shop before you notice it he has bought a new car before you notice it he has two branches now and 
if you see the guy stuck in this abaklicky where people are saying it's hard to make it I saw the boy started with nothing 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 just one okrika he put on the ground what the guy had faith in that business he had belief in himself listen if you don't believe in you and God believes in you you will still fail if you don't believe in yourself it doesn't matter who believes in you it doesn't matter how much God believes in you you will not make it still but if you believe in yourself and the whole world does not believe in you and God believes in you he will make it and let me tell you God believes in everybody on earth are you hearing what I'm saying? Hello? Can you talk to me? I hope you're not lazy tonight. Can you talk to me? Hello? If you believe in yourself and the whole world does not believe in you and God believes in you, you are making it quick. The guy started small. But now he has gone big and he's going bigger. He has gone big. He's driving. The people who used to mock him now are looking at him. They are the ones he's mocking now. You see anybody who looks at what you're doing now and is looking down on it? Check that person. He's not doing anything. People who are doing something for real, when they see something small, they know it's going somewhere. It's just like me. If I see somebody starting something small, I believe in it because I know that was how it started. The key to all is small. The key to having it bigger is starting with meager. Nothing else. As long as you're doing something, you will go somewhere soon. You will get somewhere soon. The ones who look at what you're doing and you're afraid because they will laugh at you, they are not doing anything. A man who is doing something is too busy with what he's doing to notice what another person is doing. Too busy. So he doesn't have time to even mock what another person is doing. It's I to people who look at other people's things and they are checking. Is it all right? Is he doing it well? Is he not doing I to people. So why are you concerned about people who are lazy themselves, who are not doing anything about their lives? Focus with what God has given you to do. Stay with it. No matter how little it is, stay with it. No matter how small it is, stay with it. It will grow in your hands. And this is one of the secrets I have put into work and it has worked for me. It has worked for me. Number five, distraction. Distraction. Because distraction is simply broken focus. You know what happens to a man who is driving and he loses focus of what he's doing on the steering? It's a serious crash. That is what happens to people on route to destiny. Okay, let me ask myself, when was the last time I was distracted? The last time, when was the last time? 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 I can't remember. You know why? I am too focused to be distracted. Anything that can distract you can destroy you. I, I want to stop at this last point now. I'm not going to take it beyond here. This last point. So you go home with these five things alone. I wanted to make them seven, but this five is not. Go and sit on it, digest it, and let it work for you. Put it to work. Distraction. Distraction. If there's anything that is equal to lack of direction, is distraction. A man who does not have direction about where he's going to is the same with a man who is distracted. Let me even tell you something about the man who has no direction. You can redirect him. The one who is distracted is headed for a crash. See how the boat works. I recall one time I was driving to Lagos. Okay, driving back from Lagos. And I was supposed to take a particular turn. And I mistook the one. I, I, I mistook that turn for another. So I took the wrong turn. I drove for more than three hours in the wrong direction. Three hours. Burning precious fuel. In the wrong direction. Three hours. I, I, I was like, 
this this road is not familiar. I stop that place. I'm heading towards Inugu area. He said, Ah, Benin. I said, you, he said, you were close to Benin already. I said, Jesus Christ. I said, what do I do? He said, you are three hours away from where you I said, blood of God. Just be asking. He said, I can't even direct you from here. He said, just be asking. That would take me another time now. Three hours already burnt, then three hours to go. So I had to drive back. Now I'll be stopping and be asking. It's also accumulating more delay. I kept going like that too until I finally got back. What a good thing about that one. The only thing that was wasted or delayed or wasted was time. But at least somebody was able to put me through. But see the danger with distraction. You may not be able to be put through. You know why? I could be driving that same as I'm driving the car. Hip hop is playing in the car. And I have one of whiskey in my hand. And I have my baby in the car with me. Once in a while, just baby uncle. You know? I just do hey. And that time I just I see trailer and come and say, baby, let me show you now. I, I can do this thing better than and I just do it. Then one of my friends just see me from the other angle. Like, hey, my man, I just turned, put my head out the window. Hey, guy, but I'm doing 160. Hey, guy, what's up now? What did happen? He has not even, he doesn't need to answer praying in heaven. If not hell. Because the accident will happen so quick. And you will not have time to negotiate your life. Oh, have you noticed it? You are dead, and that's the problem with distraction. <laughs> Some of you are very distracted. That's why you've not been able to travel far. That's why you destroy destiny. You're distracted with a lot of wrong things. Distracted with the wrong friends. Distracted with the wrong company. Distracted with the wrong gadgets. Wrong priorities. Some of you do the right things at the wrong time. Do the wrong things at the wrong time and everything goes wrong. Distracted with the wrong kinds of dressings. Wrong priorities. I'm one man who is so busy to be distracted. Check my itineraries every day. So loaded. Morning till now. Busy. Charging the course. An achiever. I'm not just a goal setter. I'm a goal getter. Nigerians are good with setting goals. What's your goal? Write it on paper. You write. But it ends on paper. I was listening to we take I preached in January this year. January this year. And I was my own thing. And I was listening to the things I was saying I was going to do by this time. I was shocked. I said, wow. I'll play that name in church one day. I was just mentioning, I said, January. January. I didn't mention it. There were so many. There was one I played one time. It was in November. And I was sitting out there. And everything and more has happened. And I look back, I say, yeah, that's what focus does to a man. You've got to stay with something until that thing happens. Until you see the end of it. You've got to stay with it. It's for co praises and hero worshipping. No. The people who try to praise me, I tell them, please listen. This praise is you're doing nice to raise me down. So I don't need it. Ah, you are a celeb. Who, who tells you you're a celeb? Because you touch the mic and play. Sing. Oh. I say, hey. One superstar. How many songs have you written? You know how many Domo don't write? It's destruction. Because you preach well, they say, ah, that pastor, man, the guy is something else. I don't listen to those people. It's good to say them. It's fine. Say them. Yeah, I like it. But it doesn't get to my head. Pastor, man, he will preach you up, preach you up, preach you up. The guy so big. I hear them. I just thank you, Father. But it doesn't get to my head. Why? The moment it gets to my head, complacency is setting. We don't dance in setting. You start. Uh, uh, uh. That's where pride enters. 
but I know my destiny. I know where God is taking me, and I know it's still far. Still far. I can't be celebrating anything now. It's still far. That's the way you should. That small business you've just started. That business you've written on paper, you're, you're here to start. Give it attention. It's not time to start throwing parties and calling for whatever. Stay with that thing until you see the fruits. Some of the you have now, some of the little money you have now, they're just but seeds. They're not your harvest. Stay with it. Let's pray. Stay with it. Avoid distraction. Whatever is causing you distraction, eliminate them. Some of you, you're so distracted with phones, gadgets, Facebook, WhatsApp. Some people went to do an interview um, for a proposal they wrote. It was my book they used to write it, though, The Winning Business, a business book. They came, Pastor, can you develop this for me? I said, it's, I've written books. Go and take one, The Winning Business. Open chapter 5, you'll see everything you need to know on on how to write a business proposal. Just look through it. So they opened. They look, 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 look. When I brought his own to me, I was showing me. I said, this guy copied everything word for word. But do you know how I felt? Sitting down, and I saw people looking through my book, and taking one or two. He said, hey! Was it not Victor yesterday? When he opened, he looked, he said, hey! The winning business. The winning business. In his mind, God, this man, but it's somebody's focus. Like what I'm seeing now. What I'm seeing. What I'm seeing now. What I'm seeing. <laughs> the word came to me recently. The Pastor Prince. God said, America is in a big mess now. So I was in America. I addressed the Congress of America recently. And when I was done, God dropped something in my heart. I was coming out from White House. He said, tell my son where I'm preparing for next. He said, what I'm doing with him in Nigeria, what I'm going to do with him in Nigeria is a child's play. He said, but all he needs is unwavering focus. He said, let his eyes be single. He was talking to me. Let his eyes be single and focused. He said, the next government of America, you address them. I said, wow. I said, this one that is coming in, he said, watch and see. He said, except I'm not God. He said, what? He said, all you need, focus. You know how he talks. Aggressive. So when I see things like that, I hear things like that, I know that you have a big work to do. So I withdraw. I'm to be carried away with euphoria, carried away with hero worship. I withdraw. I withdraw. I withdraw. If you know how many calls I receive in a day, how many SMSs, how many affirmations I receive a day, if you are not focused, you can be distracted. How many five five faces I see every day? And I'm a fine pastor. Break your head on the wall. No apology. I don't care how you feel, my dear. <laughs> Somebody called me yesterday. She was talking. He said, Pastor, hey, I was somewhere. So we were just talking about you. Hey. I said, What were they saying? She said, they mention it, mention it, mention it. You know what came up from my mind? I said, um, Can we talk some other time? The pastor, you know, excited. Excited about what? Those people don't have business now. They don't have time. If they have time, we didn't notice all those things. Yes. No one notice it. Lift up your hands. Just talk to God. God, internalize. Be the kind of man who cannot be distracted. There are more principles. I don't have the time to show you, but I'm going to show you some of them. Maybe as time goes on. Lift up your voice and pray. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's Word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 070-331-66762 or 081-31-555. 747. Princeton Hills Ministries, raising global leaders.